Good afternoon, everyone. My name is David Lapsley. I am the engineering lead at MetaCloud. MetaCloud is part of uh, is part of Cisco uh, Cloud Services. Today, what I'd like to talk about uh, is client side rendering with Angular JS. And so, this is going to cover some of the work that we've been doing uh, uh, at MetaCloud on uh, enhancing user experience using uh, Angular JS. So, first, I wanted to start by just showing some of the features that we've implemented using AngularJS and client-side rendering. Uh, these features are currently running in production. So this screen here is, you'll, you'll uh, notice that this screen is the hypervisors panel in Horizon. So you can see a list of all the hypervisors there. So we've actually re-implemented this screen entirely using AngularJS. So all of this uh, information here is displayed or is rendered on the client side. And this has given us a number of advantages. So first of all, one of the things that we were able to do, because we know there are only ever going to be 500 hypervisors uh, in a particular availability zone, we're actually able to cache the full data set on the client side. So what that means is we can have a very interactive uh, user experience. So for the first time, users can actually query, uh, do a filter in Horizon, and query the entire data set and uh, uh, filter based, uh, um, based on whatever terms they enter. Uh, there. We also provide full pagination across the data set. And as a user goes and uses this, they actually the speed at which uh, pages uh, go through is, is very fast. We've also implemented a live stats feature. So live stats gives our customers a lot of visibility into what's going on in their platform. So this has also been implemented using client-side rendering. And so it means we have uh, a very interactive user experience. We refresh the page every five seconds so that users can actually see what's going on on a particular system in real time. This is a historical metrics panel that we've implemented. And this panel has been implemented using a combination of server-side rendering and also client-side rendering. So it's an incremental approach, and it shows how you can enhance Horizon to actually use client-side rendering, but within the existing Horizon framework. So I'd like to take a step back now and talk a little bit about Horizon's architecture and how we've enhanced it to take advantage of client-side rendering. So this is your typical Django stack. So at the top, you have the web browser. You have requests coming in from the web browser, which go into the URL dispatcher on the top right there, and then from the URL dispatcher into the view, where they're serviced by a Python function or method, which is responsible for rendering the view and returning it back to the client. Typically, the view will go to a model, which is the abstraction layer between the database and the view. It allows you to represent database tables and records as objects uh, within Python. And then the model sits on top of the database, which can be MySQL, PostgreSQL, uh, or any number of backends there. So once we've retrieved data from the database, it comes back up through the model, it goes through the view. Uh, the view uses templates to actually render uh, the, the data in a form that's presentable to the user, and then returns it to the web browser there. So Horizon actually adds a lot of functionality to, uh, to the, the default Django stack. I'm not going to go in great detail uh, through all of these different components here, but if you look at all of those components that are shaded in light green, these are all new features that have been added to the Django stack uh, by the Horizon project. The biggest thing that you can see here is that, well, there's a couple of things that are of interest here. So first of all, in the web browser, there is already some client-side functionality implemented using jQuery and Bootstrap and some other uh, JavaScript frameworks. So requests will come in from the web browser, again, through the URL dispatcher into the view. Uh, the view, there are a large number of classes that have been implemented there to enhance or make it easier for developers to actually extend Horizon functionality. Instead of a model layer, we have an API layer. So Horizon is, by design, stateless. Uh, and the reason for that is so that uh, it, you don't have to maintain synchronization between data that's stored, that could be stored in Horizon, and data that's stored in Nova. So uh, to simplify things from an architectural perspective, Horizon uh, is stateless. So we have an API layer there, which makes it really easy to make calls into the back-end Nova services using, uh, uh, using clients. Uh, and that, those, a, those API calls then go down to the OpenStack services on the, on the bottom of the diagram there. So what we've done is actually enhance this stack uh, more, add some additional functionality that takes advantage of AngularJS. 
So all of the uh, all of the components in yellow there are new things that we've added to the horizon stack to make it easier to do client side rendering uh, uh, in horizon. So in the top right there, you can see we've got an Angular MVC stack, which is responsible for doing all of the client side rendering. On the server side, we've added a REST API, which provides REST resources that are responsible for exposing the data that the client side is going to use. So the REST API basically exposes data as URL endpoints, and then that data can be forwarded to the client side in the form of JSON. In addition to that, if you have a look at the data tables component there, which is uh, a really significant uh, uh, set of functionality within Horizon, we've modified the data tables module so that it's possible to actually add Angular components on the data side uh, uh, so that they get shipped to the client side and then render client side. So the reason this is interesting is because it means we're actually able to do client side Angular rendering, but within the existing Django or Horizon framework. And so this is, provides a really incremental development path. So I wanted to talk briefly about AngularJS, just give an overview of what it is uh, so that uh, um, the benefits of, of AngularJS will be uh, uh, evident. So basically, AngularJS is an MVC framework, a model view controller framework that was implemented by some folks uh, at Google and has a very active community. It's been around for about the last four years. It includes a number, of, uh, a, a number of components. So one thing is the MVC framework itself. It also includes client side templates. Uh, typically, templates are rendered on the server side, but Angular allows you to define templates which then get shipped to the client side and rendered to client side which gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of how you present data and also uh, how interactive your, uh, your views are. It provides data binding, which automatically synchronizes uh, the model, uh, model portion and the view uh, component, so that when you change the model, the view component is automatically updated. And it also provides dependency injection as well, which is a very convenient and well-known pattern that allows you to easily share uh, share functionality between different modules. Here's a simple hello world example for AngularJS. So basically you have your view in an index.html at the top there, and you have your controller at, at the bottom there in controllers.js. So a couple of things to note about the view. Uh, uh, the view at the very top, you've got ng-app, which indicates that this DOM fragment is an ng application. You've got the script includes for AngularJS and for controllers.js. Then within the body there, you have uh, this ng controller, which actually links the DOM component to the JavaScript uh, hello controller. Uh, and then you can see there's greeting.txt, which is uh, basically a placeholder um, that's used to, uh, which basically ties the view into the backend model there. And then you can see that there's an ng click component, which uh, ties a click on the button there to a backend uh, JavaScript function. So if you have a look at controllers.js at the bottom there, you can see that we have this greeting object, which is included within the scope, uh, and that has some text in it, which is going to be rendered on the front end. There's an action function as well, or action method, which is also going to be included in the scope. This is another way to look at this Hello World application. So you have your controller at the top left there, you have your view at the bottom right, and in the middle you have a scope. And the scope is basically tying the controller and the view together. So the controller can put in, uh, information into the scope, and that information can either be data or it can be functions. And then the view is either rendering that information or feeding back, uh, back into the scope, which then goes back into the controller. And this is the output of that Hello World example. Totally unimpressive from a visual perspective, but if you think about all the plumbing that's going on behind the scenes, it's actually pretty neat. So you have your Hello World up there on the top left. You have a button. You click on the button, and it pops up uh, a JavaScript alert. So I wanted to briefly go through how you would add a new feature to Horizon using AngularJS and client-side rendering. So this is the directory structure for a typical Horizon dashboard. So in this case, it's an OpenStack Summit dashboard, and it has a hypervisors panel in it. So I'm sure a lot of people are going to be very familiar with this. We're going to have to go through this very quickly. 
But basically, uh, in client-side rendering, your focus is on index.html, which is where the view is defined, and hypervisor's controller.js, which is where the controller is defined. And then the RESTful endpoint, hypervisor.py in this case. So here's an example of what the REST resource would look like. And you can see it looks very similar to a horizon table. Uh, the only difference is that it's returning and rendering uh, JSON instead of HTML. And one of our goals is actually to make it so that you can define a regular horizon table uh, and just by overriding a method be able to produce the same output as this, so JSON. Here's what a controller would look like. There's actually two controllers here. One is the table controller and the other is the action drop-down controller, which is responsible for that drop-down menu that you're familiar with uh, in, in Horizon. So the main thing here in the table controller, you can see that we have headers uh, are inserted into the scope, titles inserted into the scope, and there's an HTTP get to retrieve data from a URL endpoint. That information that get, then gets stored in the scope and it's then used to render the view. Then we've got an action drop-down controller, um, which basically has the functionality you need to be able to render the action drop-downs and then also take appropriate action. Here's uh, the boilerplate for Horizon uh, uh, index template. And so now we just add some Angular uh, methods to it. So there's a title there, there's header name. So we have an ng repeat, which is basically going across columns and filling out a table header. And then here we have two more ng repeats. So the one at the top is basically going through all of your instances. So basically each row. And the, the second one from the top is going through each column and populating that with data. And you can see there's also an ng controller as well, uh, which is responsible for doing the action drop downs, uh, uh, the action drop down controls there. So if you go through all of that, then this is what you get something like this, uh, rendered fully on the client side. So why do we go through all of this? So there are a number of reasons uh, to, that, uh, a number of advantages to doing development in this way. Um, but really, the main reason that we have decided to go this route is because it allows us to build better, uh, more interactive user experience and do it in a faster manner. So thank you very much. I'd also uh, like to mention that uh, if any of this sounds interesting to you, um, we're actually hiring at the moment. We're looking for people to help us uh, work on these sort of projects. So if you go and have a look at that URL there, um, you'll see some descriptions for some of the posi posi positions that we currently have open. That's right. Thank you.